Hey guys, Coach Goodrich here with another uh, American, this was American history video for my 8th graders. This is Unit 12, this is the final unit of the year, and this is just our brief overview of Florida history. We've talked about some of these things before, um, but we're just going to go have a little uh, skim over Florida history um, because I think it's important for you to know about the state in which you live. So your essential questions, number one, how does the history of Florida add to the overall history of the United States? And number two, do you still feel the overall cultural impact of the melting pot settlement of Florida? How so or how not so? I would pay very close attention to number two in particular. Uh, America is also, is or has been known as the, uh, the great melting pot, and I think Florida is even more of a microcosm of that uh, with so many different people from all over the place moving and living together in one place. It's really a kind of a beautiful thing when you think about it. Um, and it's an important thing to remember uh, during these uh, trying times um, and very divided times that we're all united. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video here and you can write these down and when you're ready, resume the video. Okay, here we go. Uh, you get a map of all of the counties of the state of Florida uh, split up into their specific regions. Um, we are, of course, in the central region. You also see the different um, uh, names for some of the regions over there as you're moving around. And the state flag. Exploration. So going back to the beginning. The land now known as Florida first came to prominence thanks to Juan Ponce de Leon, who made two trips to the northeastern coast in 1513 and 1521, searching for primarily the Fountain of Youth, which he apparently did not find because he has been dead for a long time. Another Spanish explorer, Hernando de Soto, made another trip to Florida in 1539 and spent four years in the southeastern U.S. searching for the lost city of El Dorado or cities made out of gold, something along those same lines. Fabulous, wealthy riches and the natives who had them. Um, he ended up dying there in Florida and or in his explorations of the southeast, never made it back home. Uh, Captain Tristan de Luna y Ariano attempted to colonize the area around modern-day Pensacola, uh, but failed um, and left the area. Actually, technically, he was uh, uh, taken prisoner by his fellow Spanish compatriots who were going to bring him back to Spain for him to stand trial for his failure uh, failing to conquer Pensacola, but he escaped um, and was never seen again. French Huguenots, uh, led by the explorer Jean uh, Ribault, set up Fort Caroline near Jacksonville and possessed control of northeastern Florida, including the settlement down known as St. Augustine, um, around 1564. And that is actually the remnants of the first and earliest modern city. However, they're not going to be there very long. So, we got Juan Ponce de Leon, Hernando de Soto, and Tristan uh, here we go. de Luna y Ariana, which is a really long name. Final colonization. Pedro Menendez de Aviles, on orders from the King of Spain, wiped out the French in Florida and formally establishes the St. Augustine in 1565, making it, according to that, the oldest and the oldest still inhabited city in the continental United States. After numerous attempts to take over the area by both the French and the English, uh, the Spanish solidified control over the southeastern United States by 1600. While bringing trade, infrastructure, and Roman Catholicism, Christianity to the region, the Spanish were very cruel to the natives in the area, many of whom were being driven south by the even crueler English colonists. After the French and Indian War um, ended in 1763, Florida switched between British and Spanish control several times, uh, both groups interacting heavily with the Seminoles, which are actually an offshoot of the Creeks and Alachua Indians who started off in Georgia and finally made their way into North Florida and finally into Southern Florida after being driven south by the British. So here's Mendendez and the Castillo de San Marcos, which is an old fort that you can still visit in St. Augustine to this day. Um, U.S. control. After the American Revolution, the U.S. gave Florida formally back to Spain as part of the Treaty of Paris by 1783. 
Uh, during this time, more and more displaced Native Americans, outlaws, escaped slaves, etc., moved into the swamps and wastelands of Florida to escape authorities in the United States, pretty much because nobody wanted to go down there and to find them. Once they got there, it was the territory was very untamed. Um, the natives were unpleasant than any outsider, so it was better just to let them go and escape than send anybody down there to find them. Because of this, General Andrew Jackson led several unofficial campaigns into Florida, leading to conflict with Spain and in the First Seminole War in 1817. Tired of dealing with the angry natives and Jackson's army, the Spanish sold Florida back to the United States in the adams onis Treaty of 1821. And Florida has been in U.S. hands since then. That's Andrew Jackson. Some of the Seminole Wars, we'll talk more about these as we work our way through it. Territory to statehood. As more Americans moved into the new territory, Florida became its own melting pot of different cultures. The Spanish, the freedmen, the natives that were already there, the French moving into the area, etc., Osceola, a Seminole chieftain, could see the lands of his people being systematically taken away, and he organized a rebellion leading to the Second Seminole War, which was fought between 1835 to 1842. Despite early success, Osceola was captured, leading to a movement of Seminoles to reservations. Many escaped to the Everglades swamps as well, where they resided for a very, very long time um, in order to evade capture. Florida became a state formally on March 3rd, 1845, and by 1850, Florida's population had reached 88,000. By comparison, there's about 22 million people in Florida today. There's Osceola, long seen as the, you know, the unconquered spirit of the Seminole, the uh, official mascot of the Florida State athletic teams. And then you can see in the different regions, you know, up here in Georgia and Alabama, we talk about the Trail of Tears, which was mainly overland travel to Indian Territory. Well, here, for the Seminole Indians, they were moved uh, through the Gulf of Mexico and then up the Mississippi River and over into the same territories. At least those are the ones that went on the, during the Indian Removal Act, the ones that did not say in the reservations, which are in the green and yellow. Development, thanks in large part to a lack of major Civil War battles, which would have brought destruction to the cities and infrastructure, Florida fared surprisingly well during Reconstruction, with major growth coming from the port cities of Jacksonville, Pensacola, and Jacksonville. Um, in particular, is seen as the logistics capital of the United States, and as a very, very, very large port city. Citrus production, obviously, cattle raising, and the growing tourism industry led to widespread growth throughout the state. In order to help people and trade items move throughout the state in a timely and efficient fashion, Henry Plant and Henry Flagler constructed numerous railroads and hotels and gave a lot of money to the state's infrastructure in order to help them grow to handle the larger populations. So the plant systems would work mostly through the middle of the state and go across, as you can see here, go laterally. Flagler started at the top and went down. And then through these intersections of these different ones, different railroads, you're pretty much able to take people to everywhere you need to go at that time. Depression, war, and modern Florida. The Great Depression started early in Florida as banks cut off investors from large loans and credit in 1926. Large hurricanes from 1926 to 1928 further damaged housing, industry, and farmlands, and the introduction of the Mediterranean fruit fly cut citrus production by 60%. As the U.S. drew closer to war, several large military bases were constructed, thanks in large part to Florida's year-round warm climate. An immigration boom directly after the war led to a large financial rebound and the growth of large-scale tourism solidified Florida's economy. Things like the beaches and the theme parks, which would eventually pop up, have helped to solidify Florida today as one of the leading tourist spots, not only in the United States, but in the world. And your mini quiz. All right, guys, I know this was short and sweet, um, but congratulations on all your hard work during this semester. You're almost there. Pause the video, go and answer these questions, and um, uh, we'll get back to you. And I look forward to talking about this with you more. See ya.